Now, as a robust lathe dealer, I have an American Beauty lathe loaded, ready to ship. Also, visit the wood turning store and look at all the vendors they represent. And I get a small commission if you spend a little money there. Now, in this video, I'm going to introduce a category of tools I think is very important. We can look at cutting tools, but in this video, we're going to look at scraping tools. Okay? And I've got a lot of scrapers in my shop. All right? This piece of walnut, okay, on this end is what I would call a traditional scraper. It's got flat top and it's got one bevel. All right? And uh, you don't ride the bevel like in a cutting tool. On the other end, I've got what would be considered a negative rake scraper. It's got a bevel on the top and a bevel on the bottom. Sometimes this angle and the bottom bevel angle are identical. It makes uh, sharpening a little bit easier. So we'll take a look at scraping tools in this video and when and how to use them. Okay, now let's start talking about scraping tools. I showed this in my very first video here on my new YouTube channel. This is a beautiful piece of uh, box elder. It's a burl. I got it attached with the faceplate and a glue block. I've got it glued on right here. And one reason for doing this is I want to save as much of this wood as possible. I don't want to make a tenon that I'm going to cut off later on. So I'm going to screw this onto my headstock. All right, now let's, uh, let's define some terms. Cutting and scraping. Okay, here's a knife. Okay, and I can whittle away at this piece of wood. And what I'm doing right there is I'm splitting the fibers of the wood because I'm cutting it. Okay, if I take this knife and, and hold it in a scraping orientation, I'm not taking off very much wood. I'm not cutting. I'm kind of abrading the surface like, like sandpaper. And we'll talk a lot more about cutting and scraping, but uh, let's concentrate on scraping. Now, I'm not going to turn my lathe on. I'm just showing you this as a matter of uh, demonstrating. I could hold this knife on my tool rest and rotate the wood and I'm scraping. You see what I'm, I'm getting sawdust. Well, I'm going to show you how a scraper can cut. So let's find a, a proper scraping tool, put this knife away. Okay, the first tool I'm going to show you is a scraping tool. It's a traditional scraper and that means that the top, top of the tool is flat and there's one bevel on the bottom. With a scraping tool, you don't rub the bevel. Okay, you're scraping. Now, I'm going to draw a line on this uh, hollow form. It's not quite a hollow form yet. I haven't uh, hollowed it out. But this line represents the center line. Okay, so here's above the center line, here's below. And that's important when you're scraping. If I'm scraping above that center line and I get a catch, the tool wants to go through the wood and, and the catch can be uh, rather dramatic, even with the scraping tool. So I'm going to put the, the tool rest where my, my cutting edge is right at center line, or maybe a little bit below. It's pretty much right at center line. And where I've got the tool, I'm going to hold that pretty much horizontal, like this. All right. Now, there's a lot to scraping. Um, I've got a little burr on the top of that. And when I sharpen this tool, with the bevel against the uh, CBN wheel, I develop a little burr right on the top, and I can I can feel that. 
that makes this tool more of a cutting tool. I'm going to turn this on and see if we can uh, produce a, a good shaving on that. I'm going to sharpen this tool. I'll be right back. Okay, now I wasn't getting a very good uh, shaving off that. I want to show you. I want to show you what this tool will do. All right, let's try this again. All right, that's a little better. And if you can see what's in my hand, I've really got some shavings that indicate a cut. It's not really sawdust. It's a, it's a proper shaving that you get from cutting. And that burr on there that I just developed, you can hear my grinder slowing down, that makes this a cutting tool. And if you're scraping, especially with uh, a tool like this, a traditional scraper, that burr will wear off rather quickly. And then you go back to the grinder and develop another, another burr. I'm going to just go along here a little bit farther. There's, there's my center line. So I'm, I'm right where I should be. Let's do a little bit more scraping on this. And as I do this, um, I want to refine the very top of this. And this is the time to do it. I'm going to just continue around the, the side of this hollow form. And you can tell right now perhaps that this is not balanced. It's not trued up yet. Alright, now I'm going to confuse the issue just a little bit here. And I want you to understand why you would scrape and not cut. I'm going to do a little cutting on this. I've got a bowl gouge, which means I'm going to rub that bevel and go down a little bit farther down here. This is too thick in diameter for me. And maybe you can see right here, I've got some torn grain. And where I was scraping, it's really a nice clean surface. So let me, let me show you something. And I'm going to do a little cutting on this, just, just to kind of show you what I'm doing. I'm going to stop right there. There's some nice, nice shavings off that tool. But you can see how much wood I'm taking off right here. There's a little ridge I left. With a scraping tool, I can take off uh, oh, like a tenth of a millimeter going around there. This, this is more like a millimeter thick. So with a cutting tool, it's hard to take off just a little bit of, of wood. All right. All right, now I'm going to perhaps confuse the issue even more. Since I've got my gouge in, in my hand right now, it's a cutting tool. And, and, you know, you do that with the bevel rubbing, and it's a proper cut. And I've got to turn, turn the tool around. I'm not rubbing the bevel. This is in a scraping orientation and uh, sometimes a gouge like this can be a really excellent scraper. All right, maybe I'll go in this direction. Let me do a little bit of scraping. I'm, I'm lowering my tool handle down like this. And this is going to give me more of a sheer, a sheer scrape.
And again, I'm taking off very little wood, but I'm, I'm producing a nice clean surface. And on my tool rest, I don't know if you can see that or not, I've, I've got some really, really fine shavings. Um, burls can be a little bit difficult because the grain is going in every direction. I'm going to come back over here. I need to scrape right into there. Now, this is uh, the flute completely open. If I put that tool in there, I'm going to get a bad catch. But if I close it, all right, I can scrape this area, blend it in with, with that ridge on there. There. Now, there, there are some proper sh shavings. Th this is not... Now, sometimes when you're scraping, you get dust. But I'm really cutting, even though I'm, I'm holding it in a, a scraping position. Look at the shavings. And that's what you're looking for, a really, really fine, you know, curly shaving like that. All right, now I'm, I'm getting a little closer with my, my final shape on this. I like that. Now, I'm going to find a bowl, and we'll do a little bit of scraping on a bowl. All right, let's go to a little bowl right here. I'm not sure what this is. It's not important. Um, the outside of this bowl, really out of balance. I've done a little bit of work on the inside to uh, level that off, and I'm going to start scraping. Now, this uh, area right in here is a very abrupt change. This goes down, and all of a sudden it goes down to the very bottom of that bowl. And I've got a little scraper. Here's another, another issue, another aspect of scraping. If you have a traditional scraper like this, Okay, one bevel, flat on the top. This can be fairly uh, catchy. Okay, you might get a, a catch doing that. And I've got the tool rest maybe too far away from the wood. One thing I do when I'm scraping is I find the surface. All right, that's pretty much leveled off. Take that center bump down, okay? And now, because I've got that trued up, I can turn the speed up a little bit, all right? And I feel safer doing that. However, I'm going to move my tool rest in just a little bit closer right here. I still have a little bit of work to do on that, so I'm going to use my my scraper. Uh, maybe start out here. Getting some nice shavings off that. And Another area where you can really get in trouble is the rim. For some reason you can get a, a nasty catch on that with whatever tool you're using. So I think I'll go around the, uh, the rim, level that off. And again, I'm getting some nice shavings off that. I got a little bit of a burr on the top. Let me show you another tool. This is basically the same tool. All right, these are very, very old tools I've had for many years. They're Robert Sorby tools. Here is my traditional scraper right there that I've been using. Now here is a negative rake scraper. Okay, there's the bottom bevel. 
there's a top bevel and the traditional scraper can be a little bit uh, harder to control. The negative rake scraper you will find is is a dream to use. Okay, let's uh, let's go around this transition right here, and that works really well. I'm getting a fairly nice surface. There's a lot going on here. There's a a knot right there. But anyway, this bowl is pretty much practice. So anyway, you get the idea. I've got a lot of scrapers. Now I'm going to draw a line at center line on this little uh, project. This is a little bowl. So uh, I'm going to just make a, make a nice heavy mark. So there's the center line. Okay, and when you're on the outside of a bowl, it's different than when you're on the inside of a bowl. Okay, I'm, I'm just about right at center line. I'm going to raise my tool rest up just a little bit. And here's the reason for that. If I get a catch with the, the tool higher, it's going to go into space. It's just going to go into, into air. If I'm holding my tool below center line and get a catch, the tool is going to go into the wood more and the catch will be more aggressive and more violent. Let's just kind of scrape that just a little bit. Let me show you something else that will help you control your tool. All right, This is pretty much horizontal. And if I want to make it less aggressive, I hold my tool handle up. And this is in a trailing position. And that just makes that tool a little bit easier to control. Okay, now I'm not sure how much more I want to show you with scraping tools. Okay, I've got a lot of scraping tools. Maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit with some of the specialized scraping tools I have. But watch the sister video to this, this one, which will be on cutting. And I mainly want you to see the difference between scraping and cutting. So let me uh, kind of think about where we're going from here. And uh, anyway, scraping, nothing wrong with it. And you can take off just a whisper of wood rather than uh, when you're cutting, you kind of need to take off more. Anyway. Okay, I'm showing you some of my other scrapers. These are what I would call specialty tools or specialty scrapers and it all depends on the profile of the scraper and the surface of wood that you're trying to uh, address. Okay so here is a negative rake scraper and that's sort of an inside box scraper. This is a really nice uh, scraper to have. It's got a pretty much straight edge on it except it, it curves a little bit in this direction, just slightly. The purpose of that is when you're uh, contacting the wood, you can't get both points in to the wood at the same time. Here is a spear point scraper. This is a box scraper. And I've got several of these. These are really handy. Here's a variation of that box scraper, which is a negative rake scraper. And this one is just simply um, a square scraper, and that's a dandy little tool to have. Anyway, I do scraping. It's a, it's a good technique, and at times it's the only thing you can do if you can't cut.